ever since the violent face-off in the Galwan Valley, Ladakh resulted in heavy casualties on both sides, that is 20 casualties in the Indian Army and 43 in the People's Liberation Army, there have been murmurs of the possibility of a Sino-India war as tensions spiral out of control. But guess what? China cannot afford a war with India, and if a limited military confrontation happens, China will be hammered from all sides. It cannot fight simultaneous wars on all sides. It will be a military blunder that the dragon will regret for several generations to come. The reason is that China simply never built friendships. It only built partnerships that it can exploit for personal gains. Today, Beijing has antagonized the world and has no real friends to back it. China has been looking to bully everyone in its neighborhood, its fighter jets are busy trying to intrude into Taiwan's airspace, and all its naval assets are locked in the South China Sea and the East China Sea. Apart from engaging in a military standoff in Ladakh, Beijing has been trying to bully five countries in the South China Sea alone – Brunei, the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Vietnam. In the East China Sea too. It has been venturing into Tokyo's territorial waters and its naval assets have been venturing around Japanese islands, Senkaku Islands and the islands of Miyako and Okinawa. China created a contagion that is killing people across the world and in its entire neighborhood it is fighting endless wars. But even otherwise, China's salami slicing strategy that denotes territorial expansion in the South China Sea and the Himalayan regions is well known. China is the only country in the world today that prioritizes expansionism and its claims in the South China Sea or border disputes with neighboring countries are mostly based on historical claims that date back to 14th and 15th century dynasties. This often comes at crossroads with international law. Beijing's nine-dash line theory in the South China Sea, for example, encircles 90% of the strategic waterways, including territorial waters of other countries, in defiance of the UN Convention on the Law of Sea. China has been busy even beyond its neighborhood, and the coronavirus pandemic has unmasked the dragon like never before, harassing countries that once thought China was their friend and backstabbing the entire world with defective testing kits and faulty medical supplies. China is fighting endless wars today. It is using economic coercion against Australia by imposing tariffs on barley and meat imports from down under. Now, China is also suspected of having launched a massive cyber attack on Australia. Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison said that the ongoing large-scale cyber attack was being carried out by a sophisticated, state-based cyber actor. He added, This activity is targeting Australian organizations across a range of sectors, including all levels of government, industry, political organizations, education, health, essential service providers and operators of other critical infrastructure. In the United States, President Donald Trump has time and again asserted that China has misused Washington's goodwill. The United States and China are currently locked in an endless trade war. Moreover, Beijing has been buying out global institutions that govern rules of international engagement, thus challenging the US-led world order. Xi Jinping wants to replace the Washington Consensus with the Beijing Consensus, which, if realized, will have catastrophic consequences for the international community. In Washington's next-door neighbor, Canada also, there is growing disillusion towards China. Tempers have soared over the detention of two Canadians by Beijing since December 2018. Recently, China started withholding consular access to the two Canadian citizens, citing coronavirus lockdown of prisons. They were detained in the first place as a tit-for-tat measure after Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou, who is the daughter of Huawei founder Ren Zhengfei, was arrested by Canada. The West, including the United Kingdom and France, has come to realize that Beijing can never be a friend, no matter the level of engagement. China never partners with a spirit of cooperation and mutual benefit, and the only purpose of China's engagement is competition with adversaries. The communist regime led by Xi Jinping is also fighting battles within China. It is running concentration camps where the human rights of Uyghur Muslims in the far western province of Xinjiang are being violated day in and day out. In Hong Kong, the citizens in the semi-autonomous region are being robbed of whatever liberties they still enjoyed with a draconian national security law. 
Small regional players like Pakistan and Nepal don't count for anything and will not be of much use in case tensions spiral out of control between India and China. Nevertheless, with the passage of time, these countries too would realize that Beijing is not a friend. The dragon debt traps small countries and forces them to compromise with their sovereignty. Sri Lanka had learnt it the hard way during the Hambantota fiasco, but it seems that by the time Nepal and Pakistan realized this, they would have already reduced themselves into slave countries. To conclude, China has no friends and its present and past actions show it will never have any friends but only practical partnerships, but such relationships are bound to bite the dust.